Okay, Mike, let's get started. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Centurion Research Solutions third annual federal budget forecast and survival guide. I'm your host, Rich Thielen, General Manager here at Centurion. I appreciate everyone joining us for what will be an information-packed session. A little bit of background on Centurion. We track 27,000 plus federal government opportunities across multiple vertical markets and support all four of these major industry challenges. We provide leading edge federal market research through our Business Intelligence Now product, enabling you to find more federal opportunities earlier. We offer actionable insight through our custom research and analysis offering. Our Opportunity Assessment Now tool allows you to make fact-based bid, no-bid decisions and manage the health of your business pipeline. Finally, we offer competitive pricing analysis, training and coaching to improve your business development process. Together, these products and services were created with one thing in mind, helping you, our clients, win more business. Today's presenter, Mike Lissagor, is the founder of Celerity Works and Centurion's business development subject matter expert. A former BD executive and capture manager, Mike has been helping government contractors accelerate their revenue growth for decades. Additional budget research and analysis was performed by Centurion's senior research director, Kathleen Sievers. We are recording today's event. An on-demand copy, as well as a copy of the slides, will be available tomorrow on Centurion's website. Finally, in consideration of your busy schedules, we will be continuing this discussion at our company blog right after the conclusion of today's webinar. So without further ado, Mike, take it away. Thank you, Rich, and the several hundred of you who have taken time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Clearly, these are tumultuous times. What is especially striking is the large number of variables that will have a significant effect on the federal government and the federal marketplace. Some of these variables have been called fiscal time bombs. So let's first discuss these six federal market uncertainties. Sequestration, which started in March after Washington failed to agree on a more measured approach to spending reductions, has since cut $55 billion, about 5%, from the day-to-day -day operating budgets of federal agencies. The entire body of government has experienced a serious loss because of sequestration. Fortunately, the Defense Department recently found a pocket of money to avoid further furloughs. But the basic trade-off continues to be between capacity, measured in the number of Army brigades, Navy ships, Air Force squadrons and Marine battalions, and capability, the ability to modernize weapon systems to maintain our military's technological edge. Which of these two major funding cut strategies materializes will have a significant impact on contractors. The current congressional and executive budget impasse along with the additional debt ceiling and deficit factors add to the fiscal uncertainty and the potential for an end-of-the-year government shutdown that would affect millions of workers and their families. The process for planning for a government shutdown, whether it happens or not, is a meaningless exercise which wastes time and keeps government managers from focusing on more important policy and mission-critical issues, which impact future procurements. This would affect purchases, industry staffing levels, and company revenue. A lot of the fiscal uncertainty is driven by the inability of the administration and Congress to agree on a budget that reduces the deficit. So even if the debt ceiling is raised, there's still the continued problem of deficit spending. Each agency is in a unique situation and will need to be evaluated. But clearly, any reduction in agency budgets will have a serious repercussion on industry. Spending levels are set through the executive budget formulation process then re-evaluated and appropriated through congressional processes. It's uncertain which of the scenarios identified above will occur. Congress will hopefully make progress on a continuing resolution for the 2014 fiscal year that begins on October 1st. With midterm elections coming next year, any continuing resolution will likely leave agencies on budget autopilot for at least the initial months of fiscal 2014. 
Also, the debate over a United States response to Syria's use of chemical weapons was a further distraction from budget deliberations. It's also worth noting that no regular appropriation bills were enacted in the last three election years, 2008, 2010, and 2012. The difference in the top-line spending means that there is little chance that lawmakers will do new versions of any appropriation bills for fiscal 2014. The House majority is sticking for now with a roughly $967 billion spending cap on discretionary spending, reflecting the 2011 Budget Control Act, while seeking to ease a restriction made by this law on defense spending. The Senate wants to replace the sequester demanded by the law with a mix of new revenue and alternative spending cuts and restore the law's original $1.058 trillion budget cap. If Congress and the administration can't reach a budget compromise, there is a possibility of the first federal government shutdown since 1996. Two government shutdowns beginning on November 14, 1995, idled different functions of the federal government for various lengths of time until April of 1996. This most serious government shutdown in the nation's history resulted from a budget impasse between Democratic President Clinton and the Republican-controlled Congress over funding for Medicare, education, the environment, and public health. Last year's increase in lowest price technically acceptable contract awards has now turned into a substantial happening. We're seeing a disturbing trend of incumbent contractors losing recompetes to lower price competitors who are bidding as much as 40 to 60 percent reduced fully burdened labor rates and less than a sufficient number of staff to perform the work. LPTA procurements too often result in lowest price barely acceptable awards. I think we all realize this is going to be an industry reality for quite some time, but let's not kid ourselves. The last time this happened, there were serious repercussions. Higher attrition rates, lower past performance, more business failures, and loss of corporate and agency knowledge and experience. So share your concerns with government contracting officers and program managers. Let congressional, Senate, and OMB staffers understand the negative impacts of LPTA. <clears throat> okay, now is the time for you to hang on for dear life as we take a look at the overall 2014 federal budget projection data. Please keep in mind that you'll be able to download all of these budget charts afterwards for a more detailed look. So I'll just be making some overall observations as we walk through several budget slides. The 2014 budget appropriations requests for discretionary programs is $1.238 trillion, as reflected by the Mid-Session Review, or MSR. The MSR adjusted the 2013 numbers and now reflects a 0.98% increase from 2013 to 2014, as opposed to a 1.27% decrease per the original request. Though the 2014 request shows an increase, the downward trend starts in fiscal year 2015 and continues the next couple of years. With the adjusted numbers from the mid-session review, the 2013 upward trend starts a year later than the original request. Starting with the fiscal year 2015 request, the discretionary budget is higher each year than the original 2014 estimates. The Department of Defense 2014 discretionary budget request of $615 billion is over seven times the request of the next largest department, the Department of Health and Human Services, which requested $78.3 billion for 2014. The Department of Education and the Department of Veteran Affairs are the only other departments with requests above $50 billion. This chart does not include legislative and judicial branches, as well as some other odd ducks. While the Department of Defense had the largest 2014 discretionary budget request, the Department of Health and Human Services had the largest increase in their requests from 13 to 14, 
an increase of more than $6.3 billion. HHS had the largest increase in their 2014 discretionary request at 8.7%. This includes $205 million under the Affordable Care Act, which is investing in mental health services and support for safer schools, including training 5,000 new mental health professionals such as counselors, social workers, and psychologists. The General Services Administration is not included in this chart. GSA's increase from 2013 and 14 is 1,039 percent, but this dramatic change is due to the unique nature of GSA and their public building service, Federal Building Fund, which receives rents and offsets their discretionary requests. These winners gained more than $14 billion in their 2014 discretionary requests compared to 2013. The Small Business Administration has the sharpest decline, with their 2014 only $952 million, compared to 2013's $1.92 billion. The Department of Housing and Urban Development saw a 30.4% decline from 13 to 14. HUD's discretionary budget is larger than SBA, so their decrease equates to $17.3 billion. These losers lost more than $53 billion in their 2014 discretionary request compared to 2013. This data reflects non-classified investments from Agency 53 reports. The figure that includes DOD classified, classified would be $5 billion more each year. 2011 and 12 showed lower final budgets than the original request for the first time in several years. The 2013 request reflected the decline of the previous years. However, estimated spending was about the same as 2012, around $74 billion. The 2014 request is slightly higher than the 2013 continuing resolution spending, more than $76.5 billion from non-classified investments. The original 2013 IT budget request was based on 2011 actual amounts, about $75 billion. However, both 2012 and 2013 estimated and final budgets were about $75 billion. The 2014 request reflects this trend with the $76.5 billion IT budget request. While the change in funding for current activities, steady state, or O&M, decreased from 2010 to 11, it has grown each subsequent year with the 2014 request of $58.6 billion. The largest steady state IT investment is the HHS Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Medicaid Management Information System. This program, which has 2014 agency funding of $2.5 billion provides for the transfer of funds to the states for the federal share of state Medicaid system costs. Now, new IT investments through Development Modernization Enhancement, or DME, funding also peaked in 2004 at $25.7 billion. However, unlike the steady state budget request, DME funding has significantly decreased each year. DME funding was $25.7 billion in 2010, and the 2014 request is only $17.9 billion. The largest DME IT investment is the Army's Warfighter Information Network, Tactical WIN-T, Increment 2, with DME 2014 agency funding of $713 million. <coughs> Both the defense and civilian IT budgets have grown over the last 10 plus years. The civilian IT investment funding peaked in fiscal year 2010 with $42.9 billion, but has shown steady growth over the last few years, bringing the 2014 request to $42.4 billion. The fiscal year 10 defense IT request was the highest with $37.8 billion followed by a sharp drop in 2011 to $34.4 billion. 2012, 13, and the current 14 requests have remained steady, 
Though the 2014 defense IT request is the smallest since 2007 at $34.1 billion. These numbers reflect non-classified investments only. So classified investments would add approximately $5 billion to the defense IT budget. With the fluctuations of both defense and civilian IT budgets over the last few years, forecasting future spending can be tricky. This chart reflects forecasts based on a five-year compound annual growth and a 10-year compound annual growth. The defense five-year growth reflects the shrinking budget over the last few years with a projected decrease of $4 billion by 2019 compared to the 2014 request. Defense's 10-year compound growth, on the other hand, incorporates growth over the first five years, translating to a positive compound growth, increasing the defense IT budget approximately $400 million per year over the next five years. As with the defense IT 5- and 10-year compound growth, the civilian IT 5-year growth reflects negative growth, and the 10-year reflects positive. However, the negative growth rate under the five-year growth is much slower than defense, decreasing the civilian IT budget by about $100 million each year. The 10-year compound growth forecasts more significant growth over the next five years, increasing the civilian IT budget request to more than $49 billion. The Department of Defense DOD-wide IT investments has the largest 2014 request more than $11.8 billion, adding DOD's components, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, increases the overall defense request to $34.1 billion. The Department of Health and Human Services and the Department of Homeland Security both have 2014 IT budget requests above $5 billion. While the Army, Air Force, and DOD agency combined 14 IT budget requests increased by $604 million over the 2013 continuing resolution amount, this was offset by the $625 million drop in the Navy's IT request, bringing the combined DOD 2014 IT change to a decrease of $24 million in 2013. The Department of Veteran Affairs saw the largest increase from their 2013 IT funding. This includes $251 million for the Integrated Electronic Health Record, upon from, up from $68.8 million in fiscal year 2013. The program holds solemn obligation to take care of our service members and veterans and to protect our diplomats and civilians in the field. These winners gained more than $1.8 billion in their 2014 IT budget request compared to 2013. Finally, the Department of Housing and Urban Development had the largest decrease from 2013 to 2014 at 36.31%, a drop of $167 million. The Navy and Marine Corps 2014 IT budget request dropped 7.7%. However, as their IT budget is very large, their 14 decrease equates to just $625 million less than 2013. These losers lost more than $1.2 billion in their 2014 IT budget request compared to 2013. Contractors can expect significant construction delays, especially non-politically safe projects. Renovations and improvements will also be delayed or canceled with a reduction in support services. Green projects are high-profile budget targets and may be put on hold. Holders of MATOX and SATOX contracts can most likely continue to anticipate fewer tasks. And energy and environmental cleanup projects may, may face further delays and corresponding M&O cutbacks. As budgets go, so do corresponding contracts. Expect to see some trimming of professional service contracts on rescoped or eliminated projects. More recompetes may be bundled or consolidated by location and awarded to the lowest price bidder regardless of value. Is this existing contracts, options, and recompetes might experience a shrinking scope of work. 
The proposal cost evaluation pendulum may swing even more to low price, technically acceptable awards. This will, of course, favor more lean, cost-competitive contractors. Existing contracts and option years will be extended to avoid costly acquisitions. Now, while there appears to have been somewhat of a continuation of the slowdown of the government's hiring of contractor staff, the long-term direction may be greatly influenced by the increasing number of retiring federal employees, as well as any new administrative or congressional initiatives. Let's take a quick look at some of the hot programs, technologies, and agencies. Federal spending is shifting away from war. The return of troops from Iraq and Afghanistan and reduction in the manufacturing of new weapons is countered by a surge in health care claims and a drive toward greater efficiency with claims processing. Here are several presidential priorities which will probably be partially or fully funded. Creation of jobs in America. High technology manufacturing, which is establishing 15 new hubs across the nation due to the success of the Manufacturing and Innovation Institute established last year in Youngstown, Ohio. Clean energy research and development. Worldwide commitment to science and research. Protection of USA infrastructure, power grids, nuclear plants, air traffic control from hacking. Defense of banks, utilities, and telecommunications networks from cyber attack, and the reduction in the deficit. I've left the detailed information for each of the hot agencies on the slides for your later re reference. I'll just be highlighting, highlighting a few of the opportunities for each agency. For instance, the two upcoming IDIQ contracts for the CIO and for the NIH. The 2014 discretionary budget request for VA is $64.5 billion. The President's priority is health care, investing in world-class care including mental health for our wounded warriors, supporting our military families and giving our veterans the benefits, education, and job opportunities they've earned. A top opportunity is the $155 million paperless disability claims processing systems which could become a large IDIQ contract. The 2014 Homeland Security budget is $44.7 billion. Some of the top opportunities are the DHS Enterprise Acquisition Gateway for Leading Edge Solutions, Eagle 2, which is a primary vehicle for DHS at $22 billion, open to both large and small businesses, and expires in 2019. And program management, administrative, clerical, and technical services, PACS 2, for the Department of Homeland Security at $1.5 billion, which expires in 2014. Uh, Centurion's BI Now clients can access much more information about these opportunities by using the CRC number shown on the slide. The 2014 Energy budget is $24.8 billion, a $1.7 billion increase over 2013. The first $153 million initiative supports modernizing the electricity grid through research and development for smart grid investments, cybersecurity for energy control systems, and permitting siting and analysis activities within the Office of Electricity, Delivery, and Energy Reliability. The second opportunity advances the technologies and tools for improved clean energy integration onto the grid through an $80 million coordinated effort within the Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. The third provides $615 million to increase the use and decrease the cost of clean power from solar, wind, geothermal, and water energy. And the fourth initiative invests $365 million in advanced manufacturing research and development to strengthen U.S. competitiveness and enable companies to improve product quality and manufacturing processes while cutting production costs by using less energy. The 2014 DOD budget request is $615.3 billion and is over seven times the request of the next largest department, HHS. It focuses resources on the Asia-Pacific region 
reasserting American leadership and promoting security, stability, democracy, and economic growth, cybersecurity, and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Two Army opportunities are the Intelligence Security Command, INSCOM, with a $7.2 billion ceiling. And with awards scheduled for February 2014, the $8 billion Train, Educate, and Coach, or Teach. The Navy has a cyber warfare support contract worth, worth $812 million that expires in 2016. Although I don't consider GSA a hot agency, it has been in the news more in 2013 than in the past and will continue to be a hot topic for at least two reasons. The relocation of the FBI from the Hoover Building. The new site requires at least 55 acres. Key factors will be a site that has a large buffer area for security and yet is close to both major highways and commuter rail. More than 11,000 people would work at the new facility. And the OASIS contract, which is currently in the proposal phase, has a scope that spans 12 areas of expertise. A companion to Alliant, it offers what Alliant does not and is split into two procurements, unrestricted and small business set aside. The RFP was released July 31st, with proposals now due October 10th. In fiscal year 2014, the overall cybersecurity budget request is $13 billion, which boosts the IT budget by 2% and represents 16% of the total federal IT budget of $82 billion. <clears throat> Key priorities in the President's cybersecurity budget are over 300 million, including new funding for DHS to support continuous monitoring of federal networks and better prevent computer intrusions. Five million in new funding is provided to DHS to enable critical infrastructure owners and operators to secure their command and control systems. 79 million in new funding for DHS, DOJ, and DOD to help agencies in the private sector connect the dots in identifying and responding to cyber incidents. And eight, 85 million for the Department of Commerce to support trusted identities in cyberspace and accelerate research and standards work on current and future information technologies. The next several slides present cybersecurity and healthcare opportunities and some pres presidential initiatives that contractors should be aware of. All of these programs can be further explored in Centurion's Market Research Product Business Intelligence Now, or BI Now. I'll quickly discuss a few salient points about each program. Navy SPA War Pacific is a requirement for developing capabilities in cyber warfare support. Efforts are to examine the architecture, engineering, functionality, interface, and op interoperability of cyber warfare collection, surveillance, exploitation and attack systems at the tactical and national levels to include all enabling technologies. Now reporting spending to the federal procurement data system is much lower than initially anticipated. This may affect how a follow-on requirement is procured. It could also mean many task orders are classified and not reported. So a point could be made that cyber is hot but not turning out a lot of visible procurements and task orders due to them being perhaps classified programs. Cybersecurity is a management priority at the National Energy Technology Lab. The program will provide research information technology support which encompasses the full breadth of IT support for the NETL in-house research and development. The Army's ITES 3S provides IT services including enterprise planning, software configuration, and information assurance as well as support services for cyber operations, continuity of operations, critical infrastructure protection, and disaster recovery. Ongoing operation support of HRSA Information Center, which serves as a national central point of entry for information and referrals on all of HRSA's programs. Services include developing, maintaining, and operating their ICICS electronic system, website, and database functions to store and facilitate publication information dissemination and distribution, and enable the full functionality of the associated information fulfillment call center. 
These efforts require expertise in a full range of information assurance disciplines. Services include design, software support, systems integration, installation, maintenance, certification, testing, training, configuration management, logistics, operations, and acquisition support. Activities require the highly specialized expertise resident in an innovative advanced technology organization that is not tied to a specific service or weapons platform and is independent of major weapons system developers. <clears throat> the focus will be on the military health system and Department of Homeland Security. This opportunity involves support services for inpatient and outpatient medical record coding and quality control and training services at various naval medical treatment facilities in the continental United States, CONUS, and outside the continental United States, or OCONUS. This contractor will provide information technology services for the 88th Medical Group at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, Ohio. The 88th Medical Group operates the third largest U.S. Air Force Medical Center and handles 315,000 outpatient visits annually. This management activity will provide healthcare support to the Department of Defense TRICARE overseas programs in locations outside the 50 United States and District of Columbia. The Air Force has a requirement to provide non-personal medical services totaling 91 staff members at both U.S. and international locations. The contractor will identify underlying causes, make necessary improvements to reduce safety risk, and establish pro processes in response to Sentinel events. Veterans Health Administration has a requirement for a full range of medical disability examinations at specified contractor locations. VA healthcare facilities, and medical treatment facilities worldwide. VA Central Office, Washington, D.C., has a requirement for the operation of an external peer review program to provide an independent and impartial evaluation of the quality of care delivered in the Veteran Health Administration. The Veterans Integrated Service Network 18 requires ongoing facilities construction, alterations, and repair of buildings, structures, and other real properties. Facilities are located in Arizona at the Phoenix VA Healthcare System and the Northern Arizona VA Healthcare System. The following four USAID opportunities reflect presidential initiatives, provide advisory services, technical assistance, and training to create a well-managed urbanization, provide improved transportation, water, and sanitation, enhance the ability of urban and local governments to adapt to climate change, improve environmental management practices and pollution control systems, and improve disaster preparedness, response, and recovery. The, this FAA contract will support the building of the next generation air transportation system. The main functions to be supported are listed on this slide. This FAA support services contractor will help improve program and project management processes, investment analysis, systems engineering, research and development, architecture and requirements planning, funding, systems development, implementation, support, and evolution. I would encourage you to visit BI Now for the individual agency reports for all of these agencies I've just discussed. Now I'd like to share some of the major characteristics of successful contractors, especially in tough economic times. The most successful contractors are agile, able to quickly respond to the competition and to take advantage of new opportunities. They have an institutionalized, focused, and disciplined business development process. The most successful contractors invest in market research. They also stay connected to their teaming partners and customers. Winning contractors are customer-centric, never forgetting whose needs they must satisfy. In this cost-conscious environment, they are lean and efficient, but not to the point of impacting their ability to identify, capture, and perform. 
Having contract vehicles and knowing how to market and win task orders is essential, especially in light of congressional and administrative interest in encouraging agencies to bundle even more services. Winning contractors also know how to establish productive, long-term relationships with industry and university partners. They avoid a making, avoid a making pursuit and bid decisions in the hallway which means they have an established BD process and strong BD capture and proposal support. And most importantly, they have consistent, proven contract performance. I'd also like to add that Centurion has expert consultants who can help companies improve in each of these areas. At this point, based on my experience with government budget downswings over the last 35 years, I'd like to share six key tactics that contractors should consider implementing to mitigate budget reduction risks and to take advantage of any resulting opportunities. With the coming large reductions in most agency budgets, saving money will be the top priority. This capability should be stressed in your marketing offerings. Sequestration fears might result in a pervasive reprioritization of what is essential and the elimination of programs that are not supportive of new priorities. The challenge for at least the foreseeable future is for companies to operate at lower rates but still remain technical leaders. Companies should take a closer look at their cost competitiveness, supplemented with outside Centurion pricing analyst support if necessary. Like their agency counterparts, companies need to develop shutdown contingency plans to identify which employees will be at risk and which will be protected since they support critical government needs. And a communication plan should be developed to manage employee morale. Companies should take steps to strengthen their relationships with their customers. This will become extremely important when clients are making the tough decisions about which programs to cut. Contractors need to assess the fiscal spending risk to your existing book of business. If necessary, use outside consulting support for each current project. They should develop a one-page description of the potential negative impact to government operations if the contract's funding were to be affected. Then discuss contingency plans with existing customer, government customers and share the one-page impact statements where appropriate. Also, develop existing new business revenue and sales projections for best, most likely, and worst case scenarios. And most importantly, adjust indirect spending as necessary. Contractors also need to take a careful look at the portfolio of products and services they provide to the government. Assess which portfolio elements have a clear value proposition and proximity to deep mission criticality and which do not. Candidness about mission criticality in your company is a key ingredient to making this work. Centurion's federal business experts and analysts can help facilitate this examination and perform the necessary market research. Once the conviction is established, the hard work is associated with planning for reductions in the offerings that will lose future marketability and increasing your investments where the demand will be certain. I hope you can join me for the next Government Contractor Knowledge Webinar on Tuesday, November 19th, as we share the state of lowest price technically acceptable procurements, including significant insights from both government and industry. The first 300 to register and attend will receive an executive summary of the Joint Centurion and Market Connections Industry and Government LPTA survey results. In these highly competitive times, more and more companies are relying on Centurion's products and services to enhance every phase of their business development process. Feel free to email one of the individuals shown on this slide for further information and post any questions or comments regarding today's webinar at our company blog. A copy of today's slides will be available at the web address listed here, and a recording of this session will be uploaded by tomorrow. I'll be sending out an email tomorrow to all the attendees with the web links, a registration link for the next webinar, and the promised budget survival guide checklist. Based on today's very large attendance, I'd again recommend registering early. I'll leave this slide up for the next five minutes. Until November 19th, I thank you for your attention, and happy hunting.
Mike, thank you very much for an information-packed session. That was a wonderful job you did today. Really appreciate that. And thank you to all of those that attended today. We look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Thanks again.